This has had quite a bit of press this past week. Um, Mr. Curry's here. Do you want to speak to the item at this point? We were going to do it next time, but this is fine today. Sure. Um, this is the uh, HUD home program construction cost audit we did uh, last year. This was the one that's showing in our report that you know, we city spent five million dollars and only were able to rehab eleven homes. Um, we haven't got a response yet. Uh, and in my six years in city government, I, I can't recall a time where we haven't got a response to our audit. Uh, this is, um, you know, sometimes we get a late response, sometimes we get a response that we don't agree with 100%, but I don't think we've ever got one that there was no response to. And, and for, especially for an item like this, something of such importance. And, you know, the citizens out there have contacted our office and, and they're distressed by the amount that city's spending on these issues. And, you know, there's, there's uh, got to be a better way is, you know, what the controller thinks and, and what many citizens out there think. And, and apparently there is a better way. Uh, and we're, Sue Shulman's here with us. She did an article over the weekend showing that Rochester and Syracuse, which are very similar to Buffalo and fall under the same guidelines federally that we do, are able to do this uh, program with more houses, dozens more houses, and they're able to do it at a cheaper cost per house, somewhere around $100,000, $150,000, as opposed to half a million dollars, which the city uh, is spending on this. So it really makes all the excuses about federal guidelines ring hollow because Rochester is under the same federal guideline. Yeah. Syracuse is under the same federal guidelines. So to hear the same excuse from the administration on why this costs so much rings hollow. And I think the people of Buffalo deserve better answers and they deserve a better plan on this because right now just blaming the federal government uh, is not gonna cut it because other municipalities aren't doing that and they're doing a much better job getting the money out on the street and helping more people. To only help 11 families over a few years for $5 million is, is not gonna cut it. And you know, the people of Buffalo and this common council deserves a response to that audit and they deserve it to be filed with the council and they deserve a response. In that response, there to be a plan to fix this issue because the city can't continue to spend this kind of money and receive so little in return. Councilmember Wyatt speaks to the details and I think on this case, we really do need a spreadsheet of the details on where the cost centers were why we're so much more expensive than, say, Rochester or Syracuse. Even look at their numbers to see what they're spending per item per house. Now, the, um, the scuttlebutt this week is these homes were demo-worthy and you know, needed a lot of work, and Rochester's not picking homes that are like that. But any home you touch built before the 40s uh, could have asbestos, it could have issues with the land around it, could have all kinds of different issues. So th that's where we really need the numbers. Uh, and that's what we're going to try to drive down to when we look at the item. Now, this item hit my desk on Bureau in 12 for Fillmore Avenue. And I says, these numbers can't be right. It's $500,000 for a unit. And they don't know that's what it costs because of the federal guidelines. So I got on the horn with Congresswoman Slaughter and, and, Cong and Congressman Higgins at the time. And I said, what are you making us vote on here in the city of Buffalo? These rules are ridiculous. At the time, they were saying that's the, the, the lawyers in Washington have made the program so expensive. That's hard to touch anything without it turning to gold. And that's what we were told at the time. Uh, it hasn't gotten any better since, of course. And this is not new. I mean, this is, I, geez, it was five years, six years ago now that I looked at this item. I didn't like it then, I don't like it now. I don't like spending $500,000 on one property, selling it for 100,000 and calling it a success. I don't think that's a success. I think the home should have been torn down in most cases. Or if it was historic, another pot of money used to fix the home more affordably. Because once you touch this federal money, just like we don't do any more storefront projects, you try to do storefronts on Hurdle or in the University District on Bailey or on Niagara, you can't do it because the owners won't partake in the program because the federal dollars makes it cost three times the amount it would normally cost, and there's no benefit to the owner to take the money. So we don't even do those programs anymore. We're out of the business. So I said, well, what if we vote no we don't do the item? They said, well, the money will just go to other cities, and they'll spend it with the same guidelines. So that wasn't a, too big of an option. So there's a lot here to look at, there's a lot to see. I want the, voter, the viewers to know, and the voters, I don't care, but the, the, you know, the viewers, I should say, but they're voters too. And the voters at block clubs are saying, why are we wasting so much money on 10, 15 homes? It doesn't make sense. And even at our block club last night, this was brought up, and very rarely does do any of my block clubs bring up policy issues with the council. But I'm glad when they do, it's important. They think that we, uh, we know what we're doing. 
but I want them to know that this item does not come to the council for a vote. We don't get items here, a packet of items. Say, Dave Rivera, vote for this house, 500,000. You know, Fontana, vote for, we don't get those in the council. It all goes through Bureau, which is a shadow government. Uh, there are three members of the council on Bureau, members of the administration, um, law departments, it comes to the meeting. So it's a quasi form of government, but it doesn't come here for full debate. The items don't come to the council floor and get this type of scrutiny that this committee provides for other items. And then otherwise, we'd look at those items here. So none of your council members have directly voted as a council member here on the floor of the council on these items. So that's what they want. People want to know that. They go, why are you voting for this? And I says, I didn't vote for it, uh, or I haven't voted for it because I haven't been on bureau. Mr. Wyatt? And Mr. Chair, I mean, while. we know we've been seeing this the last several weeks in the news on, you know, the local media and I would have thought someone from the administration would have been here. You know, why didn't someone come down here? We, we hear one side, but Brendan has told us a number of times when we've all spoken about how much money we're spending on this, this is HUD's formula. Yeah. And as long as it's HUD's formula, we can't do much. But if other cities are doing it differently and being able to get a better result, why aren't we doing what those other cities are doing? But at the end of the day, you knew this was going to be on the agenda and no one comes down. We are inviting them specifically on the item for the next agenda on this topic with some pointed questions so they come prepared as to what Rochester is doing. With other Susan did a nice job uh, drilling down to those numbers in other cities. Uh, I only asked the question, are the same rules in place for other cities across New York? Right. And they said yes. I said, okay, it's across the board. It's not just for Buffalo. Because remember we were under some special, remember when Louise came in and, and slapped us all around and put us under these special uh, regulations here locally that was pretty interesting uh, and we had some special regulations just for Buffalo at the time those have been lifted so it has nothing to do with this well someone had said to me that one of the problems that drive up our costs is that we're using a lot of these dollars on two family structures where in those other cities they're doing it on single, single family, family so I can understand that but still if there's a way to um, be more efficient in doing something that they're doing you know, those are things that, you know, save us a dollar to do other things with, you know, that I think that we should all be on the forefront of trying to address and implement. I fully agree. Thank you. Mr. Fairlow? Yeah, be, I think it would be good to look at just what I was looking in the article, and I know we talked about this on the council six months ago, but about specifically about Rochester and Syracuse, um, because from my understanding, the houses that in Rochester and Syracuse are, are smaller, than what we're doing, and they're also not in as bad as condition right. as the ones here. So I think it's important to look at uh, like the price per square foot, not just the, the total number spent on each property. Yeah, drill down and get those numbers, like you said, are, is important. That's why I mentioned, because to speak to it in, in sheer numbers is hard. You have to really drill down to see what they're doing. What is it costing them per square foot to do the flooring? What is it costing them? Um, to do the electrical in the house. What's it costing them for the roof per square foot? Or per, um, what do they call it on roofs? Um, oh, geez. Square. It's per square on a, on a roof. It's 27 square, 20 square. Roofs are per square. It's like three bundles of shingle per square. So that's what you have to look at to see what it's actually costing. And do they have the same soil policies as we do? Do they dig up the soil around the house? Um, because currently, without proper records from the 80s and 90s as to where some of the soil came from, they're just going through and digging out a foot of soil and putting back a foot of soil. And that costs quite a bit of money as well. And then asbestos costs as well, too. And how many contractors do they have? We have limited contractors participating in the program because they're slow to get paid sometimes. So people say, I don't want to work for the city programs. When you have fewer contractors due to a slow pay situation, that increases your costs. Mr. Rivera? Mr. Chairman, um, there are times where uh, Bureau makes a number of decisions that, all, like you mentioned, they are a separate entity or shadow of government. And we don't know unless you sit on the board what is happening within Bureau, what decisions are being made, and for what reasons they're being made, or what requirements, what process they have to follow. And we find out about this by reading the Buffalo News. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, I think that we should be more informed with the activities of this agency. Uh, because people assume that we as council members sign off on that. And we certainly don't sign off on spending $500,000 to rehab a house. And I don't want to be lumped into 
uh, if I don't sit on that board and I don't have a vote with regards to um, approvals that they have. So I would like to see them forward us more information. We have, we know very little about what happens in Bureau and we have three members on the Common Council that are there. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but I don't have a vote. I don't right. vote on it and certainly if we did have a vote, I would have to justify uh, why I vote the way I do. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'd like to see more transparency. I'd like to see more information flow from Bureau back to this body. Um, and there is no accountability to us. So I'd like to see more information in terms of decisions, policies, requirements with regards to HUD in particular because of the issue with HUD and the requirements that are there. And you brought up a good point. Um, is it different for any other city in the state of New York? Are there are different requirements for different regions. I don't know. Well, I think you hit the nail on the head. I don't know. I, th I think it's the council president. It's uh, the chairman of CD. I, I don't know who the third member is. I think maybe Mr. Scanlon. But if we could ask that our chief of staff, um, he was here earlier, our assistant chief of staff, um, they should really file their agenda with the council. That way every month we see it, what they're doing. Because that, that doesn't happen. There's no mechanism. So I'm sure that our staff goes there to accompany the council members. That should be filed. Our chief of staff should be in charge of filing that agenda with us. So it's on our agenda. We could look at it. And if it says, you know, 570 Fillmore Avenue, 500,000 for rehab, we would see that here on the council floor at that time. And we could ask questions before any audit would come out years later on. I mean, this, this item hit Bureau in 12 and 13, and it's on this audit. So it's a long time ago that those items were put forth on, on Bureau. I think 13 was the year. All right, so um, we'll, we'll invite the necessary people in for the next meeting to talk on the item, and we'll go from there. Motion to table. Motion to table, seconded by Councilmember Wyatt. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn, seconded by Councilmember Wyatt.